What's up, everyone? Welcome to my corner of the internet. I'm your host, Ryan Kramer, and this is Crossover Commerce, presented by Ping Pong Payments, the leading global payments provider helping sellers keep more of their hard-earned money. What's up, everyone? Episode 32 of Crossover Commerce coming at you live. This is Ryan Kramer with Ping Pong Payments. Thanks for joining us again today. Welcome again to 2021. I know yesterday was a little weird for people. It was Slack was out, Zoom was out from people. No one knew what to do with their time. So we kind of just like took it easy. But now we're back into it, hopefully today. Um, We're coming again live on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. For all of you out there who have not watched the show, Crossover Commerce's focus is to bring perspective on different types of the e-commerce and Amazon, uh, you know, environment, whether it's shipping and logistics to advertising, which we're going to be talking about today, to just like theory on customer psychology, you name it. We're going to try to touch uh, touch on that and bring a little bit of a a nugget that you can take away, which again, I use the word nugget specifically, which we'll talk about here with our guests a little bit later today. But I'm really excited because our guest today is Mike Zagari from PPC Entourage. He's the founder, Czar King. He said he said you can name him a little bit everything. So we're gonna we're gonna give him all the fancy titles, but he's the creator, is what I want to say, of PPC Entourage. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Amazon ads, and then what's new for 2021. A lot of people are have their predictions, their expectations, but maybe things we can look out for if you're an Amazon seller trying to grow internationally or here if you're just getting started. We want to bring great content to you guys. So let me go ahead and bring in Mike. Mike, what's up? How are you today? Hey, what's up, Ryan? Hey, everyone. How's it going? Happy 2021. Yeah, it's it's been kind of crazy. We were chatting just a little bit banter before this of, yeah, it feels like different. Everything's good and normal, right? Like everything is everything is fixed and problem solved, right? But that's not the case. It's still kind of that that carryover, hang, I would call it a hangover of 2020, but but I think a lot of what people are expecting is just like a lot of goodwill, a lot of good things are coming, a lot of expectations. And that's why I think today's show is kind of fun is because we're going to talk about expectations of 2020, maybe what you're, you and your company are planning out and then uh, maybe like learns, uh, things that you learned from 2020 and that we can carry over to this year. So, but for those of you listening, uh, if you have questions for Mike or I, myself, go ahead and comment in the stream. Uh, we'll answer those live. We'll throw them up on our screen so everyone will be able to see. And if you catch us on a replay, go ahead and follow up. We'll make sure we tag Mike. We tag his team. His team's fantastic. They're always posting on social media with great educational content, with PPC especially. I know that's what we're talking about today, ads in general. But if you have a question, go ahead and throw it up here. and We'll make sure that we get in touch with them or we'll answer it as well. So Mike, why don't you get us started, uh, kick us off. Like, What's your background? Kind of, You have a unique background in terms of creating PPC entourage, but where you started and how you got where you are. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know my story, I am a recovering physical therapist. And some of you <laughs> have probably heard this before. And by recovering, I mean, I just hated being a physical therapist. You know, I didn't know that about I, you. I, yeah, I loved helping people out. Like, don't get me wrong, but it was all of the paperwork dealing with insurances. Oh, my cat decided to join us. Um, all of the, just the, just the crap associated with being an employee. I really didn't enjoy it. To the point where when uh, when I was in college, my hair was completely falling out, you know, and then it kind of grew back when I started to realize, man, this is just not for me. So uh, I consider myself a recovering physical therapist. And then, you know, I just dipped my toe in the water with so many different entrepreneurial endeavors, failed a billion times, made a million mistakes. Like even with uh, physical therapy, I started a physical therapy business. I was helping seniors in their homes and I was traveling all over the place. You know, that turned out to be a blessing because I got to listen to a lot of books and realize that that was like the springboard to learning more about what else is out there. And then took that. And one day I had a coach. He's like, hey, you know, I see you as um, doing something and importing and exporting. I'm like, what the hell is that? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) I'm a physical therapist. I was trained to do this. Um, And then like three days later, I saw an advertisement for shop drop shipping on eBay. I took the course, I like just dove into it, like get made a hundred million mistakes, went into private label and then started my own Amazon business and then realized that Amazon advertising was the place to be. And that was back when things were super easy, like back in 2015, 2016. So like, you know, one of the crazy things that I decided to do as an entrepreneur was make a software tool 
not knowing anything about how to build the software tool, but hey, why not? That's just part of the journey. And we built PPC Entourage to help sellers to improve their advertising because at the time there really wasn't anything around. And of course, advertising was very much in its infancy back then. So enough about me. I know we're talking about 2020 because <laughs> there's been so many changes in the advertising space in 2020. And I know, Ryan, we're going to talk about some predictions as well for 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And not, not super fascinating. I think that story kind of reminds a lot of people when they get into like either e-commerce or Amazon, where they're, they're just like sick of what they're doing, but then also kind of want to be their own boss and kind of do something that's different, new and unique. And a lot of what we do is education constantly. And I think that's super fascinating. You were like, hey, I just took one course and kind of snowballed into kind of building my own business. And this is where you are. So that's really cool. When was that? Like, when did what time frame was that when, when you were doing that process? Yeah, that was around 2016 when I got okay. the idea and it, it started from a search term report. And I still think search term reports are super valuable, but it was back then it was like digging into the search term report, finding out what customers and shoppers are actually thinking, and then harvesting that information and turning it into an automated process. And the mm -hmm. whole tool built from there. And then it, it just got you know more complicated and more advanced. And what's really cool about that is more psychology uh, of like, what's yep. a customer going to be like converting on? Is the imagery? Is it the wording? Is it the is the placement? I, I think that's super fascinating. What a lot of people don't understand is kind of the the scary background of like the data that you can collect from people's just like searches, um, where they're going to most likely make that conversion. So what's kind of that? So the philosophy from PPC Entourage. Obviously, there's lots of agencies. I call them agencies out there that that specialize in PPC. What, what's kind of your guys's philosophy um, from the get go? Is it is it the customer psychology? Is it more like trying to be the cutting edge? What, what, what's that kind of take for you guys? Yeah. So we want to automate. The, first off, I am not a fan of spreadsheets. I never will be a fan of spreadsheets. I did I loathe them. I loathe them as much as physical therapy. So uh, we want to make sure that sellers can get the benefits of using spreadsheets, but have it so that they can automate that process and do it quickly and easily. So that's where the tool, that's like the evolution of the tool. We have a really advanced bulk editor feature. Uh, we want to reduce what I call and have learned what are called MWAs, minimum wage activities, the activities that are draining you of your time and energy week in and week out. We want to help sellers to continue to do those important things like optimizing their campaigns and, and staying on track with the campaigns they've built and to simplify the process of building new campaigns. But things are going to, and they already have in 2020, they've started to get more complicated. And with that, reducing your minimum wage activities, doing some of the things and automating some of the things, but then freeing up that time to be more creative. Now there's three ad types. When I started, there was only one ad type. So Amazon right. is now allowing us and uh, ex expanding the space so much where creativity is going to be paramount and also knowing the customer psychology and knowing how to get your ads in front of them at the right time and knowing how to retarget and strategizing is way, way, way more complicated than it was before. So the software tool allows you to reduce a lot of those, what we call the MWAs, to automate some of the things, to do things in bulk, to save you time, to free your time up, to then strategize to really get creative with your approach. Because obviously, you know, the more creative you get and the more you do the little details to really help you grow and expand, the better off you're going to be compared to your competition because a lot of your competition isn't doing it. I love that. And I think our audience on LinkedIn loves that too. And again, guys, if you have comments or if you're just insights or you just want to say hi, feel free to go ahead and comment on that and then we'll make sure we throw them up. So that, that's a great story and, and, and great, great point that you talked about, um, especially when you're starting out on your business, you don't have time and effort. And even myself, like when you want to do a new project, all the time and effort and make sure it, it, it runs smoothly. Like you said, the MWAs, I like that term of you don't have time. Time is the one asset that you don't have. And as a, as a fintech company, uh, there, there's value in everything we do, but you can't get back. Like there's no value on your time. So if it's taking time away from your family or if you're taking time for making money, that's something that you definitely want to automate. Um, but we're being clear, right? This is something that a tool that you can still manage, but it's not going to be like an AI, like hands-off approach, right? That that's yeah. the distinction we're making. No, we're in the middle where if you're looking for automation, you can set up all the automation, you can set up campaigns quickly and easily, you can do things in bulk. But if you're looking for a set it and forget it AI approach, as of now, we don't do that. That's not our specialty. Um, we may go there in the future, 
But right now we're looking more towards improving the ability for sellers to creatively make ads that are really going to help and convert. So that's going to be our next step. Um, right. Things like headline creation and custom image creation and video creation and things that are going to really help sellers take advantage of the opportunity that's for them right now. Also finding audiences because that's a big piece to it as well. Where are those audiences hanging out? Are you tra are you targeting those ASINs, those categories? Where are you hitting those audiences? Are you are you targeting your um, competitors' ASINs? All sorts of things. Right, and I think that was the cool thing we talked yesterday about editorial content, which is another big wave. I think a lot of people are touching on. But this is more the pay to almost the pay to play aspect, but making it smart money to convert those those customers. So kind of reeling back real quick. You said there was one ad type when you first started, now there's three. Maybe maybe just for a high level, if pe people are beginning, they're like, wait, there's more than one Amazon ad. Let's let's break it down for them. Step one, or like add one, add two, add three. What are those uh, things that people need to be aware of? Right, so back in the day when we first made our first Blueprint series, we had four different types of campaigns. So it was like really basic. We had sponsored product campaigns. You can set up an automatic campaign. You can set up a research campaign. We called it a P&E campaign where you basically took all the different search terms from those first two campaigns and moved them up and you graduated them. And then we had uh, an exact match campaign. So that was really it. I mean, it was very basic. Now we just came out with the playbook series and there's 28 different campaigns. And the reason being is with all of the different features that Amazon has given us throughout the years, even with sponsored product ads, like now you can really strategize based on some of these different features. For example, um, targeting different placements. You wouldn't want to target, if you're doing a discovery-based campaign, some of the more uh, like sort of reach categories or reach keywords at top of search. That could get very expensive very fast and you're not like super relevant. So this helps us to create a different type of campaign. We're trying to get that discoverability and you get all the little nuances. Now, not to overwhelm people, I mean, it's not that <laughs> difficult to set up, but these little features allow you to be a little bit more targeted in your approach so that you're not just doing like the scattershot approach and, you know, losing a ton of money on wasted ad spend and wasted search terms. Yeah, that may, I mean, that a lot of people, I think, do get overwhelmed. I think this is one of the areas, apart from like international expansion, a lot of people are like, uh, I know it's important. I know I want to do it. I, I almost like a lot of approaches. It's not a lazy approach. It's, I want someone to do it for me. Like, what do you tell people when it's, you can do it yourself and it's not that hard, but you have to apply and you have to be smart with it. And that's what you're trying to overcome is you, you can just throw money at it, but it's going to be a waste of time and money. What, what's kind of that education process for you guys to your clients? Yeah. So that's why we have the different tiers. Like if you're just getting started and you have one SKU, maybe two SKUs, download the educational material, go through the Amazon ads playbook, um, go through the foundations course, um, playbook series is free. All the stuff is free and just learn it yourself because then when you go to outsource it to someone else, or if you go to use a tool, you'll know the basics and you know, the foundation, you know, if you're, if you're doing less than a million a year, I think you can do your own Amazon advertising yourself especially if it's less than like five SKUs or so. Once you get like five, 10,000, $15,000 in ad spend, you know, five, 10,000, maybe a tool is going to optimize that ad spend a lot more efficiently than you could. So you can save some time with those MWAs there. You know, if it gets higher than that, or if you start to add on layer on a lot, a lot of SKUs, you have product lines, you have a storefront, then it gets to be more complicated. Then you need someone who maybe has more experience and can free up your time to do what's really good for you, which is maybe finding new products or working on your brand or connecting with audiences or whatever it may, may be, because you're at that point, you're may, more than likely leaving money on the table by not working with someone who really knows the Amazon advertising landscape. I mean, all the different ad types, all the different nuances, all of the different changes that are coming out, you know, this is when you want to start to think about either hiring an agency or automating it even more in some way. Great point. And, and, and kind of going into that's so a natural segue. So 2020 threw a lot out that us, I know like Amazon DSP, uh, video ads are becoming more com uh, common uh, for brands. What, what were the major takeaways for you guys in 2020? And then we'll kind of segue that into this new year. What do you kind of expect Amazon? Because Amazon's almost, they kind of like allude to it. They'll like release it in a marketplace, but then they'll really like amp it up. Um, we'll talk mainly about obviously the the United States marketplace and then 
maybe grow internationally from there. So what were those major takeaways from last year that kind of got you guys excited, really saw it, hey, this is going to be a trend that sticks around uh, moving forward? Awesome. Yeah. And for those of you watching, I want to know what your favorite change was in 2020. What was your favorite update of 2020? Because Amazon, like there was so much going on in the world. And then there was so much going on in the world of Amazon advertising. It was just like crazy. Sometimes every single week, a new feature would come out. So I'm going to go to the Wayback Machine. This is uh, 2019. And in the end of 2019, Amazon made a lot of changes with regards to sponsored product ads. And then they kind of put the brakes on changes to sponsored product ads. So back then we had automatic updates. We had the targeting types. We had a lot of different um, optimizations like bid, bid placements. You can do top of search, product detail page, modifiers, and try to get your, your ads shown on different placements. You had different types of bidding strategies. And this was all introduced in 2019, early 2020. And then, you know, thankfully, Amazon's like, you know what, done with that. Let's move on to sponsored brand ads. And they started making a lot of updates. We got introduced to video ads, which have been a blessing for a lot of sellers, especially if you got in early. And by the way, it's not too late to get into video ads. They're still really great, especially if you're trying to get a lot of exposure, a lot of awareness, because you're paying for the actual click. And there's just... A, it's, it takes up a ton of real estate. So video ads are really, really good. Um, then they also introduced like some interesting changes for sponsored brand ads. We had the custom beta image, which really helps your brand to really stand out. So this is a beautiful lifestyle type image that can show up both on the product detail page um, and the uh, page results in search on desktop and mobile. And you can, it really stands out. And it just allows you to really capture that attention of the shopper and drive more traffic to your storefront. So Amazon's really getting more into the uh, sponsored brand ads and driving traffic to store storefronts. They also introduced for, for most sellers spotlight um, store spotlight ads, which allows you to showcase all the different categories for your different for your brand. So this is a great way to get brand exposure. And really what I did, what I think they did, Ryan, is they allow they they helped us or helped me at least to connect all the pieces. So, you know, at first it was just you know bottom of the funnel sponsored product ads. We want to get in front of the shoppers when they're ready to buy. Now it's like we can utilize sponsored brand ads, sponsored brand video ads, and I can't wait to talk about sponsored display ads to really create like a full picture effect for where shoppers are in their journey in buying your product. You know, it's not just oh they're ready to buy. Let me show an ad. It's let me show them something that they, they maybe they're not ready to buy right now, or maybe they're considering my ad, or maybe they don't know about what I'm selling, but now I have the tools because of Amazon to place ads both on Amazon and off Amazon, which is totally new this year as well. The right. ability to target on and off Amazon, if you're new to DSP, you had that before, but now for uh, Amazon sellers who are just using the advertising console, they can use that with sponsored display ads. So they're, it's like now they're painting the full picture for us. And that's why there's 28 campaigns as opposed to four before, because it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And that, that was the thing that I found really cool is when, when people think about ads in general, and then we had a couple of people, again, for uh, we threw up the question for you, a couple of people are answering. We'll get to those in a second. But um, especially in 2020, when you talk about DSP, you're talking about the old way of advertising of like display like banners, or it's a passive thing or almost like a passive thing in the old school way. When it came to PPC, it's, hey, you can attribute a click to an advertisement. And then it got, became really even smarter with video and more picture content and then uh, targeting specific keywords. And then even got smarter with both on Amazon and off Amazon. So it's really cool to see the progression of like, it, it's scary when people are like, how do they know? Well, there's easy ways and explanations to know that. So Amazon DSP, I've talked about once or twice before, but we haven't gotten too much in depth on that network. Maybe give us a high level on Amazon DSP explain to people like why that's valuable for not just Amazon sellers, but also building your brand uh, going forward. Yeah, so a lot of sellers are new to DSP and quite frankly, it's new to me as well. I just started working with DSP in 2020 and essentially it's it's an amazing way to target the, the whole of the internet, like all of these third party sites, Amazon owns and operated sites and on Amazon. And it allows you to find different and new audiences. So it has this really complicated way to, or interesting way to find audiences that may be uh, interested in your product. So you could do discovery-based ads. 
You can do um, all this great retargeting. So you can set up uh, retargeting based on your competitors' ASINs or based on your ASINs. You can retarget shoppers who have been in your listing but haven't purchased. You can retarget shoppers who have purchased before. All these things you can't do quite yet with sponsored display, but I think they're going to start to migrate some of the features for DSP onto sponsored display, <clears throat> which means it's going to get a little bit more complicated. So there's a lot, it's, it's like the Facebook ads of, it's way more complicated. Right. When you go in there, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. There's all of these little nuances. You can like, um, first off, it's a cost per uh, CPM model. So cost per 1000 impressions. And, right. and you could target off Amazon and Amazon, on Amazon. You can set your frequency, how often you want your ads to be seen. You could even show like how much you want your, uh, like what part of the page you want your ad to show, like how discoverable is your actual ad. So it's way more complicated. And if you're just getting started, I would not even think about DSP until you dial in sponsored product ads, then sponsored brand ads, then sponsored display ads, and then you would move on to DSP. And even so, Amazon may reach out to you and say, hey, you know, you don't want to start, do you want to start DSP and require like a twenty-five dollars or $30,000 a month spend? And not only that, they'll make the ads for you. And let me tell you, <clears throat> there's a big difference in, there's a big emphasis on creative with DSP. So having Amazon do your ads for you may not be the best idea. In fact, everyone that I've heard who does that is usually regretting it. Um, so what shocker. I would recommend, yeah, shocker. So what I would recommend doing, if you get to the point where you've done everything you could do on um, Seller Central or Amazon Advertising Console, sponsored product, sponsored display, sponsored brand, if you really have that dialed in and you want to move to DSP, work with an agency who can then work. They some of these agencies work with multiple different um, brands, and they don't have to spend thirty thousand a month. You can spend five thousand a month or six thousand a month, and slowly get the low hanging fruit of DSP. So we like to start with retargeting ads, like get that right. low hanging fruit set up, you know, then start to build some more brand awareness ads with DSP. Uh, but it's definitely a journey. It's a gradual process and, and not every seller is ready for it. But I do think it's going to be something that a lot of sellers will take advantage of in 2021. That's super cool. And, and like, obviously, this is something that when retargeting comes into place, this is something that if they didn't convert, that you can also obviously like follow them around. It's an uncreepy way of calling, like follow them around to make and poke them and say, are you sure you don't want to uh, do this? So when retargeting ads, are they just serving up those ads? Or does that also come via email? Like, I, I know I've seen like, cart abandonment uh, campaigns and things like that. Is that something that DSP touches on? Or is that something completely separate? No, so that's not something that DSP, to right. my knowledge, touches on. It's simply like creative campaigns that show up. Like you could be on some third-party site and then see um, like a video for your product that drives you right back to the uh, listing page. Also, you can get very creative. You can also drive traffic to your actual own your own page. So right. if you have a, like a really good, like let's say people shopped on Amazon and you wanted to retarget those people and sell them something on your own site because you have a little bit more control. You can do that with DSP, whereas obviously you can't do that with the advertising console. So there's yeah. nuances there. You could also target them on like the Kindle and Fire and all sorts of, um, you know, they're even doing voice, voice ads now too. So if you want to get brand awareness, you can do voice ads. Well, that's the thing I was going to ask you is like, I know some people have kind of like poked at a trend for 2021 would be like a uh, voice advertisement or voice recognition. I mean, like, obviously when you say like, Hey Alexa or, or, or Alexa or uh, Hey Google, those are kinds of like the, what we're talking about in terms of like voice ads. So how, how does that work? Can you maybe walk through like a very high level? I, I'm assuming you guys don't touch on that yet, but I'm assuming yeah. that's going to be coming down the pipeline pretty quickly. I'm assuming. Yeah, so the voice app, the voice ads are meant for um, people who are using free streaming music. You know, if they're listening to the the free version of it, you know, obviously <laughs> every couple songs, there's going to be some kind of ad, and it's really meant for like brand awareness. Um, right. But also, I think what's going to happen is you get some kind of a like a like some kind of gr a copy that shows up on the screen or an image that shows up on the screen of your actual product, so people can maybe click on that and go back to your listing as well. So I think it's really meant for sellers who are way advanced, want to try it out, want to get that brand recognition, have a budget for discovery phase. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't start with this or even think about this until you've dialed everything in. It's still in beta. And sometimes things that are in beta are just like really buggy or expensive or the ROI is not there. In terms of tracking, I think you can track um, the impressions and you can track. It's hard to track clicks back to the actual site. I don't think they have that. Um, but it, it's still very much in, a, in its infancy. Yeah. And I'm going back to the favorite things about 2020 and Mila is saying we finally have video in EU and like pra praise emoji. I love it. And then uh, I'll follow up as can apply all my advices now. So <laughs> look at that. So yeah. And that's the thing too. Uh, I know a lot of the things that we're touching on Amazon releases in .com, but when, are you guys working with a lot of international clients? Because we uh, at Ping Pong, we have, you know, sellers who are in China, sellers who are in Europe, sellers who are in multiple different countries around the world. Um, what how are you guys touching on any of those marketplaces and maybe some distinguishing differences? Like Emil said, video wasn't even released until this past year. So what was kind of, do you guys work with clients like that? Yeah, we do. <clears throat> and we just integrated with Japan and Australia and Singapore nice. and uh, UAB for the application. So you can do all PPC entourage with uh, all of these different countries. But I, USA seems to get all the love first. So all the features are available there and then they move over to um, they move over to these other countries. I think the benefit of that is knowing what's going to be coming to your country. So you have time to prepare. So like let's say you know Emily just said that video got introduced in EU. Like that got introduced early in 2020. What an opportunity to prepare videos and to be ready to hit the ground running for when it actually hits. You know it's going to hit. You know that these features are going to hit. Um, and then actually, speaking of Emily, she posted a really cool uh, link the other day where you can actually put in the country and see what's available in that country or in that region. Oh, with that's awesome. Hard. Yes, because like not every, it's very, it's even, it's like hard to keep up. You know, there could be something in Spain that's not available in Germany or, you know, or Japan or, you know, Australia, all of these different countries. So, um, Emily, if you're listening, go ahead and post that link. Because yeah, that's a link. And yeah, for sure. Emily, yeah. And then uh, Ping Pong will also post that on our social channels too. And we'll make sure we tag you and all those things. Just because, like, like again, this show, it uh, we have guests on to share information and to share these nuggets of wisdom so that you can walk away with. Hey, I didn't know that, or I can, you know, a different perspective on, di on different kinds of topics that we touch on. There's just so much going on in the world. Like it's hard to keep up. Maybe on that note, Mike, what are, where are you learning and keeping up with all the things that Amazon's releasing or watching where other experts quote unquote are, you know, keeping up to date and trends? Yeah. So constantly learning and growing um, by listening to pretty much everyone in the space, going on Amazon every day. Uh, going to Seller Central, like figuring things out, putting the pieces together, working on accounts, listening to podcasts. I mean, that's that's what I enjoy doing. In fact, you know, 2021, we did the uh, we're, we're doing our OKRs this year. Uh, and we yeah, just touch on that. Let's touch on that. Yeah. So um, yesterday we had our first meeting uh, for 2021 OKRs, which is objective and key results. So basically you set an objective for the company and then the key results are actually how you get to that objective. Um, there's a really good book called Measure What Matters. I highly recommend it. It's what Google uses to grow their company and keep everyone on track. That's a brilliant way to give people their autonomy and to really, you know, allow them to get to their goals without having to, you know, control everything and, and be in control. But you collaborate together and you work in a spirit of harmony to help everyone reach that goal. And at the end of the day, you want to hit your company goals. And these goals should be way more than you actually think you can do. You know, and, and we use OKRs for not only for our business, we use them for our managers and the managers use them for their clients because we want to target stretch goals. We don't want to just, you know, stay comfortable or in the middle. Um, speaking of that, I'm also reading Grant Cardone's 10X, 10X rule, which makes you really think big. But uh, anyways, OKRs are really important. And um, so my one thing, if you go to the one thing or the thing that I have to do daily in order to feel like normal human or to really excel is to learn and grow. Like I, and I realized that on the call, I'm like, if I don't learn and grow every single day, within two days, I feel like a moron. I, I, and I, I mean that, I feel like I'm left in the dust. <laughs> like, like, what the hell happened? Um, yeah, you feel like you missed a whole wave of like, I mean, we were uh, just talking, I mean, just like, uh, this sounds really weird and objective. It's like the clubhouse thing. Like it's, it's just like this, this wave of like, 
what is it like? I you, you feel like you're left behind. It's a big FOMO of like I think people in the space and for for us and we have to be in front of the technology so we can educate people on help other people grow. So that, that I feel that way all the time. Not just with like learning, obviously, but like just technology in general. Like, what's it gonna be the next day? Or if you're like take a week off and vacation, I feel like I'm playing catch up on like, wait, this happened this week. Like, what happened? <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, and the, the like, last year, we did days of nuggets for like, it was two months of my life dedicated to that. And when I came back, you know, Amazon had really changed quite a bit. And I was, I tried to keep on top of it, but it was almost impossible because days of nuggets was like all consuming. Um, and it took a while to, to really, really catch up to really like get in that space again. I'm like, Oh my gosh, so much has changed. And I think it changes weekly. Like Amazon comes out with updates weekly. And it's like, you know, that's the thing for me, staying on top of everything, thinking outside of the box, like going into brand analytics and figuring out how you could tie the dots between brand analytics and advertising, figuring out outside traffic ideas, like all of these little nuances, how to figure out what the customers are thinking, what they're like, all of this stuff. And that that's what I enjoy the most. Absolutely. And you kind of like, uh... Not took the window on my sale, but like alluding into like what you're passionate about too. And I think keeping up on trends and the things that I was interested introduced to in 2020, the biggest project I think that I was able to be a part of was that Days of Nuggets um, event. I say event, it was like a whole spectacle really, uh, <laughs> and whole movement, I should say, that you put on specifically. So why don't we spend, I know, you know, we're about halfway through like this episode, why don't you you spend a little bit of time like educating us on like what Days of Nuggets is, kind of where it helps Amazon sellers, but also helps a really cool and great cause. Yeah, so the uh, Days of Nuggets event started a couple of years back. Um, actually, this is the this was the second year, but the idea came like three or four years ago when I was at an event. Um, I was at Capitalism Conference and learning like crazy, you know, at that event. And the final speaker was a keynote speaker who came on talking about Operation Underground Railroad, which is an organization that basically goes into these um, hellish conditions in the U.S. and overseas to free kids from child trafficking. And, you know, the whole room was like really just silent and like in shock, basically. And, and the videos that they showed and the stories that they share were absolutely beyond words. And it planted a major seed in my mind, in my business partner's mind. And I knew that I wanted to really give back. And at the time, you know, we were so busy in entourage, I, I really couldn't give a lot of time. But then when the opportunity came, we had a, a, a kind of a slowdown in entourage. We were waiting for our tools uh, to be developed, like certain features. We were building things and uh, and it really just hit me. It was like this idea just hit all of a sudden. It was like, how can I give back? And this idea for um, collaborating with people in the space who really have a lot of great stuff to share, asking them what is their one amazing, incredibly important nugget of wisdom that helped move the needle in their business or someone else's business? What is something that they're sitting on that can really help sellers grow their business? So that's the nugget. We call this the days of nuggets. And the whole thing was to raise awareness and money for Operation Underground Railroad. And, uh, you know, last year we raised a lot of money. This year was a tough year in terms of like getting through the 2020 craziness. But we did raise some money as well. And I think, you know, for me, it was a lot about planting seeds, just like the seed was planted in my mind a couple of years back. You know, I want to plant the seeds to as many people as possible. Um, in fact, I was on Clubhouse yesterday and I heard this, that Grant Cardone was talking, people were talking about Operation Underground Railroad. And I was awesome. like, oh shit, like not because of me, but the point is more seeds are planted, you know, every time somebody brings this up and it only takes, you know, several, it only takes, you know, one multi-million dollar, you know, seller or, or even every, every $2,500 saves one kid. So like, it doesn't take a lot to really make an impact in someone's life um, with what they do and the ripple effect on what they do is absolutely crazy. It, it's, it's so meaningful. Yeah. And I, I think the concept around that was just like bringing value of like the people who've done it, bringing value, but also taking those funds that you're donating and like turning around and helping another cause. So in multiple different ways, you are helping both obviously save lives, but also you're helping yourself 
educate and grow and take away these nuggets. Like I said, it was, they're quick takeaways. They're not like hour long podcasts. You have to sit through and take notes or like circle the the right thing or the, the thing you're going to take away. These are like quick hits from the leaders in the industry that were just fantastic. Not like I, I, I was taking notes left and right once I was hearing all of those different ones. And I, and I applaud you for doing this kind of project because there's just so many different things outside the world. Like obviously, 2020 is like everyone's like secluded and we feel alone but there's still these ongoing issues in the world that they don't just stop like time doesn't stop it continues to move forward and you have to continue to work towards these kinds of like efforts as well so super cool i, I was super fortunate to be a part of it like i said and i i want to thank you on behalf of like everyone who you know you know either donated or spent the time on it and i, I can't wait to see where it kind of comes in 2021 where you know, we're, you're just helping even more and more kids uh, with this kind of tragedy. So uh, yeah, if anyone has any good ideas, like, let me know. We want to do something a little bit different in 2021, like change up the strategy. Um, you know, it, it in my mind, it's such an amazing idea. Like you you help, you bring these nuggets out. Um, you you provide a lot of value. These nuggets go viral. And then, you know, we, we raise money and raise awareness. We didn't raise as much as I would have liked. And I think there's probably a better way to raise money for this cause. So I'm, I'm open to ideas for next year. Um, you know, the content was amazing. The donations were a little low. And I'm starting to think like maybe something along the lines of some kind of auction where we auction off some of these amazing influencers time. You know, maybe they give off like a, like an hour of their time for like 500 bucks or something like that. And that sure. 500 buck donation goes to like help these kids out, but also can help you to really grow your business, like to get, you know, in front of someone who really has done a lot of great things. Um, yeah. Emily just posted the days of nuggets site, which is still live by the way, you guys can go over there. Uh, yeah. So I'm excited for 2021. It's going to be a little bit different in 2021. I want to do something and shake it up a little bit. So uh, once again, if anyone has any ideas, let me know. Well, let's do it. You have my support, obviously I'm, I'm there to jump in as, as you know, and, like I said, any, any kind of value we can bring to both Amazon sellers, but also help a cause, I think is really important to just keep in mind. Like we're here, a lot of people in the Amazon, even bigger picture wise, are super fortunate because of the success we had this year on both business wise and uh, entrepreneur wise. If you're a seller, you saw a lot of growth. You saw a lot of like headwind in terms of capital that you were probably able to raise. So it's super important to um, give back as well um, here as people who are fortunate enough to do that. A lot of people lost their lost their jobs. We, we are our own bosses or we work for a service provider who can, uh, obviously, you know, give back and grow in these kinds of times. So always keeping an eye on what, what more can we do? So super cool project that we're working on again, days nuggets.com it's live. You can donate. You can also uh, check out some of the content that they have, um, available, uh, just like the little tidbits of nuggets. You'll find me, my beautiful face there <laughs> as well. And, and then all the other cool and great people, past guests of our show, um, people that were, were just are super good at what they do. Um, but awesome. Again, thanks for that, Mike. So kind of taking a somber topic and kind of going into a more like, Hey, let's, let's be optimistic about 2021. What are, what are your predictions? What are your kind of like things you're keeping an eye on, uh, moving forward? And then we can maybe, t maybe capped off the episode here in the next kind of 20 minutes on what you're kind of excited about here moving forward. Yeah. Um, so there's now three different ad types and that is an awesome thing. I think it's going to get much more complex for sellers, unfortunately, but that's actually a good thing. If you look at it the right way, I think, you know, the sellers that really learn the platform and really learn how to use the features and really take the time to learn the features are going to excel. So, um, you know, the, the good thing is, you know, sponsored product ads, I don't think there's going to be too many changes. They haven't made any changes in 2020 that are really, you know, big changes. So I think sponsored product ads, you can dial that in. It's it's going to be more expensive to go after certain keywords. Of course, you know, you want to look for opportunities, look for different ASINs, different categories, test things out, and always be optimizing, set up a system for success and a system for scale. Know how to scale the keywords that are doing really re well and set that system up. That is your bottom of funnel. That's your low-hanging fruit. So I think that's going to be really uh, important for sellers to get their systems in place for that in terms of optimization and expansion. But I don't think there's going to be too many new things to learn there. I could be wrong about that. But then 2021, 
is going to bring a lot more career amazing things for brands. I think, you know, more information in brand analytics, uh, more features in the storefront, more features for video ads, more reporting for video ads. There's going to be uh, maybe, you know, you can drive video ads to to different individual store, uh, different listing, uh, like there's your storefront, which you currently can't do. Um, who knows what they're going to do? But I think there's going to be a big emphasis on video. There's going to be a big emphasis on sponsored brand ads, different placements for sponsored brand ads, the ability to showcase your brand on Amazon, and then combining that with brand analytics, because you can look in your brand analytics and see how many of those new to brand sales lead to returning customers. So I think connecting the dots for sellers so they can make smarter decisions and get away from the tunnel vision of my ACOS needs to be like 20% is going to help sellers make really good, smart decisions to grow their brand so they can see all that. And you're starting to see that and, and stop me anytime if I'm, if I'm blabbing. Oh, no, you're fine. You're going, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, you're to see that in sponsored brand reporting, like the search term impression share report and also the category, um, the category report, which basically shows you, are you dominating that search term in sponsored brand ads compared to your competition or is your competition dominating you? And now you can tell that. So all of these different metrics like are kind of scattered across different reports and it's very hard to know exactly what your money is doing you know, but I think this reporting is going to get better. And then I think the sellers should really look at the true ACOS, also known as tacos, who take all of that ad spend and realize the value of it, realize the value that they're pumping into the Amazon machine, getting those organic sales, getting the flywheel going, getting returning customers, digging into their, their um, search term reports and seeing that their, their actual brand name is showing up in the search term report. Kudos to you. That means you have a brand. That means people are looking for you when they're coming back to <laughs> your product. Learning how to protect that with brand protection campaigns, being a little bit more sophisticated and, and really getting out there. I think Amazon in 2021 will give us the tools to do this. They've already done it in 2020. I think they'll continue to do that, to streamline that process a little bit, to simplify that process a little bit, connect the dots even more. Like I said, in 2020, I was able to connect the dots. I kind of saw their, saw their vision. I didn't know where they were going. 2020, I saw the vision. 2021, I think it gets easier for all sellers, including myself, to know the vision and to really connect the dots. Um, I also think there's going to be a huge emphasis on sponsored display ads. So right. simple, it's kind of like DSP Lite, you know, simplifying um, the ability to target shoppers, retarget shoppers, both on Amazon and off Amazon, getting um, new custom creative for sponsored display ads. Uh, you know, really, really dive, diving into like ASIN targeting and, and all of that stuff. They're adding new features for sponsored display ads, new audiences. They're going to continue to do that in 2021. And then it's going to open up the door for sellers who are ready to really take advantage. You know, I always say like, if there's a first, if there's something that comes out for Amazon sellers in advertising, hit it up right away. You know, sometimes it's going to be a clunker, you know, like for example, some of the audiences for sponsored display ads, you couldn't really scale it at first. You know, it really wasn't working out. Amazon was still getting the kinks out of their system. Now certain audiences are doing much, much better than they were before. So, you know, going in, doing sponsored display ads, doing ASIN targeting, figuring out which ASINs you want to target, getting a little bit more, uh, a little more dialed in to your, your strategy. It's all going to come together, I think, in 2021 and 2022. Um, so there will be more complexity. There will be more features. With that comes advantages for sellers who are willing to learn. And then also, um, you know, things may get a little more expensive too. But I think if you're an early adopter, you'll be all right. That's awesome. And then what, so maybe like, that's obviously like down the road. What's one thing that you wish that Amazon would either bring back or that you think like, hey, they took it away and it was doing so well for agencies and companies like you guys? Oh, one thing that they took away. Because, um, you know, Amazon, they like to take away things. <laughs> they like, like, yeah, that's crap. like that, that's not worth it. Oh, that's a lot of work. Or... <laughs> I, I, I miss the old dashboard to Seller Central, personally. I, I've heard that from a couple people, actually. Yeah. Can they the get that? The UI was, was poor. Yeah. I, I think um, in terms of advertising, what could they give back? Uh, nothing's really coming to my mind. That is, they, the, is the term Amazon Vine? Is that is that 
Does that ring a bell? Because that was brought up on the show. I think like I don't know if that was in ads, but I think like oh man, not Vine. Uh, the oh Vine around. Yeah, the Vine program. Is that what the, you consider that um, advertising? Yeah. I'm not as well versed in that. Yeah, um, well, that it's it plays into advertising, so that's more for reviews or getting reviews, which gotcha. obviously improves conversions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's important for, for advertising. But um, the last I checked, that was still around. I checked a couple of weeks back and that was still okay. available for sellers. So um, I don't know. I don't, you know, I think there's going to be more that they give than they take away, but nothing's coming to my mind in terms of what, gotcha. yeah. That's, that's okay. And, and that's, uh, and that, that's something, obviously it's, it's a good thing. Like they're continuing to give more things that are helpful. Um, my other, my other oh, question. I have one thing. Oh, I have yeah, one go thing. Ahead. Yes. This is driving everyone on my team insane. So Lay it on insane. ROAS versus ACOS, you know, Amazon one day decided to like, just flip the switch from ACOS to ROAS. And like, we've just like our whole, you know, last five years has been ACOS, ACOS, ACOS. Now also right. you go online and you see ROAS and it's like, you got to do this like mathematical calculation in your head. And then you got to change the, the, the charts to show ACOS. And it, it's just like kind of a pain in the butt. What's uh, the, so for people who don't know, what's the, what's the flip side? Like, what is the difference? Can you break it down real quickly? It's essentially the same number, but in verse. So it's showing the exact same thing. Like if you have a 20% uh, ACOS, you have a two, two, uh, four ROAS. So it's the inverse relationship of ACOS to ROAS. The thing is most sellers are used to ACOS. ROAS mm -hmm. is a nice number, but I would like them side by side. I, won't, I don't want to have to like choose between the two. And if I had to choose, I'd still choose ACOS just because that's what I'm used to. So <laughs> don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? <laughs> yeah, my whole team was pissed about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, my last thing, and I know a lot of people when I used to work at Viral Launch, they would ask us on theory. Um, so I'm going to get your take on this theory, ranking, uh, ranking products. What is, there's a, there's a lot of people, there's different philosophies, how to rank products when you're introducing new ones, uh, with the PPC, uh, a hybrid model of giveaways and things like that, as well as like a search find buy. what's kind of your theory, Mike, or like PPC on theory behind that. Obviously I'm assuming it would go one way, but I'll let you kind of take the, take the mantle on that. Yeah. So ranking is interesting. If you're looking to get you know, visibility on Amazon right away, there's certain launch campaigns that you can do. Um, we call them the keyword launch campaigns and the ASIN launch campaigns, essentially just helping Amazon know what you're selling. So expect that you're going to do it at a loss at first because you don't have any reviews and you have to spend money in this space to really get visibility at first because you don't have the, the, the you could use a coupon, but you have to overcome that. So using that in combination with outside strategies is typically the best. If you have an audience, utilizing that audience to drive traffic, you know, for seasoned brands, definitely utilize your audience to drive traffic. Search find buys are fantastic. Even with PPC, con the combination of the two, uh, all of that is you want a diversified, a diversified traffic stream. But with advertising itself, there are strategies that you can put into place. Um, I am not a believer of doing automatic campaigns essentially from the beginning or broad match campaigns because initially I want to tell Amazon what I'm actually selling. And if I use a broad match, there could be all of these search terms that, you know, yeah, I could get a sale for, but it's distributed over many, many different search terms. So if I'm looking to rank, I'd rather rank or figure out, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to get sales for like four or five different keywords and target that and then drive sales and drive rank through that and then move on rather than distributing that across an automatic campaign, broad match campaign, where my money is getting like spent across all these different search terms. And I really have trouble knowing which ones are working because some of them may have two clicks and no sales, one click and no sales. And it just like adds up. So right. dialing that in across the most relevant ASINs and the most relevant keywords is super important. Um, and then also utilizing your top of search and things like that to really dial in where you want to show up on Amazon, using those modifiers, fixed bid, all that kind of stuff. So having a good foundational strategy is great um, for ranking, but it's got to be diversified unless you have an incredible product. Like back in the day, we didn't do any of that. Um, oh, actually, you know what? We did. We used viral launch as well. But our predominant strategy back in the day was we used viral launch, but we also had a lot of PPC. And because the product was good, people bought it and we ran right. 
And that's, that's kind of the key, right? You, you have a good product and that's, that's the number one key is don't have a sucky product because then it won't like come back and bite you later, but have a good product, have a little bit of everything strategy, a mix of everything, and then kind of grow it from there. So, and then I, I always said like, use the rocket of like a launch strategy, like, like a, a rank bell or like other rank services out there that kind of get your product visible and then add on PPC strategies to keep it like, keep that engine going because a rocket will only go until it runs out of fuel, but you have to keep that momentum going with other kinds of strategy. So um, we did have a question that came in through Facebook. So Brennan, a uh, uh, frequent listener of the show, he said, what's the hardest or most annoying product? Uh, or like maybe it will go even a little bit broader more of industry or like category to advertise for. Uh, you know, it, it, a lot of those uh, supplement categories are really competitive. And unless you have like really deep pockets, it's going to get super expensive. Like some of the even cost per clicks for video ads are like really high. So it, it's very challenging to, to advertise unless you have really deep pockets. Um, you really have to look into your full picture. You have to look into the full picture there. First off, you have to have deep pockets. You have to have a competitive you have to have a really good um, competitive product, a really good listing, all that stuff to improve your conversions. But you have to look into the bottom line. Like how, what is the returning customer? Like how many people are coming back to, to buy your product? Know that number. What's the lifetime value of your, of your customer? Because the chances that you're going to like make a lot of money, at least early on, is very slim. You have to really spend some money in that, in that space to make it. Um, once you make it, it's really great. People come back, they can purchase from you again and again. Uh, but of course, I think that is the toughest one to really advertise. Also, low margin products are challenging. You know, it's a mathematical equation. You can't squeeze, you can only squeeze that this so much juice from a lemon that just came out of nowhere. But the <laughs> point is, hey, that's a good, that's a good uh, metaphor. <laughs> I like it. Um, Use it. The point is like, you need to know your numbers. You know, we have the margins tool, which I haven't really told a lot of people about. It's an amazing tool that shows you the uh, ins and outs of the, the profitability of your product. And if you're not at 30%, really, it's hard to reinvest into your product. It's hard to buy inventory. It's hard to pay yourself. It's hard to buy or get into new SKUs. So 30% um, is the target. And with that, around a 10%, ad spend margin impact is the target. So if your ACOS is 80, you know, what is your true ACOS? If it's 10, cool. You know, you need to know those numbers. So in terms of what's the hardest or most annoying product line to advertise for, I would say low margin. I would say supplements, but really you got to know your numbers and you got to know your targets. You got to know your goals because yeah. you got to start thinking like a bigger brand. If you're looking to win in that space, you have to start thinking like one. Yeah. And I, I would also say a very like compet competition is another thing to look out for. If you have something where there's just so many different variations of one product type, uh, or if you're trying to target like a brand, like that's pretty established, like a Instapot or something that has like high visibility in terms of brand recognition, you're not going to win those keywords. And that's going to be hard to, if you have like something that could help on those kinds of products, that's going to be hard to win and get yourself visible to those very broad terms. So, uh, great question, Brennan. Um, so Mike, what kind of going to the top of the hour when people are looking for, or have other questions, obviously when they watch us later, it's, it's kind of early in the West coast and they're waking up, they're going to saw, see all these kinds of nuggets. They're going to take it away and say, oh my gosh, I need to learn more. Where can people find out more about PPC Entourage yourself or any of the other projects you guys are working on? Yeah. Um, you know what? Go to our website, ppcentourage.com. We just updated it today. It's I saw that. I was like, this yeah. looks new i like it. yeah we, well, like it went it went live today and it's um i'm excited about that in fact if you for the next 10 people that download the playbook series which is 100 percent free i know emily uses the playbook series there's 28 different campaigns you'll see my face going through each one and it just says on my page on my page yeah for sure yeah it, it's just a step-by-step -step guide hey, you know set up this campaign and when you're here and we go over the customer buying cycle so you basically know when to set these campaigns up and how to optimize them and all sorts of things. So for the next 10 people that do that, um, I will tell my team to look at that. I will give you guys a free coaching call and we'll go over your account. So head to ppcentourage.com. You could also email me at mike at ppcentourage.com or you can find me um, on Facebook, the Entourage Seller Community, where we drop nuggets, nuggets daily. And we can, um, you know, hopefully some of those nuggets can help you 
grow your business. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, I love your community. It's super involved. There's a couple thousand people are just asking questions, absorbing knowledge. Uh, I'm always learning something new from that. Uh, you and your team and your partners are constantly posting stuff on there. I just actually downloaded the ebook, so I'm one of those people. So take 10 away from myself. <laughs> uh, it was super easy, and you didn't even know I was doing it, everyone. So I, I went on there. It's at the bottom of the page. Super intuitive. Um, I love the website. Yeah, I was going to mention that it's super nice and clean uh, for all the new kind of features. Again, new year, new you, guys. Uh, <laughs> so that that's congratulations. Tell the a developer who built out the website looking good. I love it. Thank you very much. Very yeah. much appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And again, for everyone, again, if you're watching live, uh, thanks for all the questions. We're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, believe it or not. Uh, good old Periscope is still kicking on there. So uh, with, with uh, we, we try to go live everywhere and bring this these nuggets of information. I'll, I'll use nuggets again. If you're playing at home, you've probably heard nuggets at least 10 times today. Uh, so uh, mark it off your board, play bingo. If you're playing nugget bingo, uh, but super valuable information. And Mike, you've been such a pleasure to have on now they're in, into the show. We call you, we call every guest friends of the show. So you're now a friend of uh crossover commerce. So we appreciate your time and your, your knowledge that you're dropping today. We'd love to have you on to kind of like do more recaps here later on. If people have questions, you can tag this video with Mike and his PPC entourage team or myself. And we'll make sure you guys get in touch with him, but go to, uh, PPC Entourage, download that ebook. We'll have some links in our video series as well um, on YouTube. So go ahead and watch it again or save it for later to kind of go back and look at some more information that you might have missed early on. So is there anything else, Mike, that you wanted to add or uh, kind of uh, before uh, we leave? For today? No, I mean, it, actually, if you download the guide and you you do it on the, from this call, just email me, Mike at ppcentourage.com, and I'll set, send you a link to set up that call. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. So sure. send me a quick email. Say, hey, Mike, I want to set up the call. We'll get a, a coaching call, and I want to help you out in your Amazon ad journey. Look at that. And Emily's cool. already touting. It's an amazing guide. I'm going to read it here uh, on top of the other. Th I also need to get your book recommendations, so you need to message those to me too. I already have up the Measure, uh, measure What Matters on my tab right here before I buy it. So yeah, it's, it's going to be good. So, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. We should start an Amazon book club. That would be a thing I think is missing out there. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. You know, at least one book a month, probably more. I li Do you listen to books, Ryan? Cause I can't read anymore. I fall asleep. I, I, that's, that's the thing with my wife. So this is the one thing that I'm trying with 2021. So my, my word of the year is follow through. And I want to like follow through. I'm like, I have all these great ideas. And I think this is just entrepreneur ship in, in general, like in marketing, we have a lot of great ideas, but like making sure we implement them and kind of bring, see them to light. I wanted to do more book reading and I'm starting to do that. I have Barack Obama's uh, new memoir, if you want to call it a memoir that I'm, I'm like really, really in, into right now. But in terms of like reading, I always fall asleep, especially if I'm in a comfy position. Something about just being cerebral just puts me to sleep and that's a bad thing. I know, but uh yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to do more of a re, uh, physical book reading this year, but audiobooks those are, those are my jam for sure. The last time I stayed awake past 20 pages, I think I was 7 years old. <laughs> I mean, I, I just and it was like a kids book. Honestly, I can't do it. I am out cold after 20 pages. I wanted yeah. it, it has to be a, it has to be like a something in your DNA, like something where my wife can read a book in a day and she's just like in a zone. Like no one can talk yeah. to her, no one and it's a good thing. Like I, I applaud her for it. It's just hard to like constantly feed her books without going to the library or anything like that, or it gets really expensive. Right. But, uh, but yeah, audiobooks, I can definitely like listen to podcasts. I listen to, um, while I'm working, but yeah, I would love to kind of like check those out that you mentioned and, and we can link out to them if we need to, but Hey, thanks for your time today. It was super awesome to have you. And, um, you know, for, for days and nuggets, obviously check out days and nuggets, check out PPC entourage. But uh, for Mike Zagari, I'm Ryan Kramer. Thanks for joining us live, guys. We'll be live again tomorrow. We have another, we're talking about balancing SEO and SEM optimization on Amazon and off Amazon. Uh, so we're going to be, we're going to be talking a little more advertising and then uh, we'll be live again on Friday as well. So Mike, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, uh, good luck in 2021 as you guys grow your team. I'm super excited for you guys and we'll talk to you later. Thanks guys. Have a great day, everyone. Bye everyone.